Well, welcome back to another episode of Lay It on the Table, the Southern Board Gaming Podcast that puts the accent on Southern. I'm one of your hosts, Joe Mahaffey, and I would like to welcome back my partner in crime, James Englehart. Good to be here. Good morning, Joe. I hope it's been a good morning for you so far. One, one day we're going to get that handoff <laughs> yeah. really, really smooth, and we're going to look like, like you know, done this before. Katie and Bryant. I'll let you decide who you want to be. <laughs> Somewhere in the future, people are exactly, going, Katie yeah. and Bryant, that doesn't James make sense James and Joe, we know. Uh, I don't know who these anyway. others are. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to start off, you know, it's, it's obviously we're like episode mm-hmm. five, episode six. I don't even know I should. That's sad on my part. But friend of the show, Ben Griffith, uh, who wrote in a question last time about, you know, what are some great games for empty nesters? And we kind of went through a long laundry list of that has come back with another question, which is focusing on, Hey, how do you use tools like zoom to play uh, board games with the family? And um, as much as I would love to spend some time talking about that topic today, uh, it has been done ad nauseum on a lot, a lot of other YouTubers and podcasts during the pandemic. And so Ben friend of the show, uh, I would recommend you Google that at uh, YouTube and also take a look at some platforms. I'm going to tell you Tabletopia because that's the one that I'm familiar with. James, I know you have a few other recommendations that may help him facilitate. Yeah, Yukata uh, is a good one. Um, Board Game Arena. There's, and those are the, I think, the three big ones. So I think somewhere in there. Uh, and I've known people who have, you know, if they have a, another uh, camera and a way to set it up, they can suspended over a board so that they can, you know, communicate. And there's a couple party games like just one and so on that are, that work well without having to have a bunch of people in the same room looking at the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I will say this, the pandemic has really forced everybody to up their game. I don't care if you're doing an RPG on roll 20. I mean, you know, roll 20 has expanded the number of uh, amount of content that they'll bring to the table as well as uh, uh, in terms of RPGs and have, as I have another, a lot of other of those technologies, foundries, right. et cetera. Uh, I know I'm leaving a ton off the list, but uh, it's everybody stepped up their game. Zoom even yeah. had to step up their game because of the pandemic. Um, I remember early uh, in my last campaign uh, during during the pandemic, um, Roll20 was struggling with um, server space because everybody was using it at the same time. So they had to expand and expand and expand, and it was kind of kind of a little tight. Anyway. So uh, check that out, Ben, a uh, friend of the show, and I think you will, um, you'll find what you're looking for. All right, so back to one of our normal uh, segments. Uh, what is on the table? So James, I'll let you well, go first. Uh, once again, it's been a whole lot of Quacks at Quedlinburg. Uh, and it's funny because we've been playing through, there's the, the four different uh, books that you can play, right? There's the opening one, two, three, four. Right. And so we've been playing through all of those and sort of getting a sense of what the different rhythms are. We're, we still have yet to flip the, the main board over, the player boards over and try the, um, the test tube version of that. It's interesting. Uh, I think one of the things uh, that we were talking about, uh, Laura and I, as we've been playing, is it's easy if you have a bunch of bad pulls out of the bag and the other person just keeps going, uh, that it can get you feeling a little resentful and just kind of pissed off. And so we've spent some time talking about the ways that even though we like this game, if you get into a, a pattern of, across a, several games where you just get bad pulls again and again and again, it can start to feel a, a little bit like I'm never playing this game again. I hate it. Uh, put it back on the shelf, never want to see it again. So we talk through like the sort of some of those negative emotions that can, well, some strong emotions anyway, that have some negative feelings around them that are like, yeah, let's, um, let's talk through this, make sure that we're on the same page still and having a good time. And so it's a, it was a, it was an interesting moment to take a couple, you know, a couple plays to talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. In, in my world, that is called the <laughs> yep, really yep. you did that. That's, yep. that's what I hear. And my, my wife, Dale, who is probably going to hit me later for saying this and calling her out. No, that's, that's, that's her go-to like whether it's, and it doesn't matter the game yep. wingspan. If I take the bird that's sitting there that she wanted, I get the really, <laughs> you took my bird. Uh, we were playing Kahaku and I took one of the tiles. Yep. Really? You took the tile I needed. And so anytime it, it, it goes into that whole, you know, that, that, that thing, I'm like, okay. And then the funny thing is, usually when she does that, she like spanks <laughs> me with her score. Yeah. 
you know, it's like, oh, she's so frustrated. She's losing this game because I took this one thing. And next thing I know, it's like, what'd you get, Joe? Well, I got like 75. Oh, okay. What'd you get? Oh, 133. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, apologizing when I play. Well, here's the first bird I'm going to build is the Chihuahuan Raven. I'm sorry. Well, you know, it's funny, too, because it's like when when Libertalia mm -hmm. came out, you know, because as, as I think we've said, you know, uh, Dale and I like to play game When we play together, we like to play games where you don't have to be mean mm -hmm. to each other to win. Yeah. And there is an element in Libertalia where it forces uh... you to be mean. It's like you you have the sword. You have to do this. And I'm like, look, it's the rules. Just do it. It's fine. Just, it's okay. Just, just yes. do what you have to do. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world. We're still going to be fine. But yeah, but it can create that level of frustration, particularly to your point. Um, when, when you can't win the game, mm -hmm. when you're in a two player game and you're always coming in second, it's like you're always losing. You're, you don't see that sense of improving. And, and in a way, it's kind of like uh, I know we don't talk about video games here. But as you know, I've been sort of obsessed with Elden Ring and, and it's great from a brain candy perspective. And each boss fight is that way in the sense that you can't, you, you keep right. dying, you keep dying, you keep dying. And then finally you get that breakthrough and there's that, that euphoric uh, feeling. It's the same way when you finally be, beat the other person at the game for the first time. Like, oh, yes. I well, and it's funny because it's, you know, with a game like Quacks, it's just random. It's just stuff that you pull out of that bag. Yeah. And there's just, it's not like there's a grand strategy unless, you know, you're for some reason buying all spiders and trying to like win that way. Uh, so, well, I think, you know, one of the things that I, and I know exactly what you're talking about with quacks, cause I've seen that too. And, and when you're pulling out your initial assortment of things that go in your bag, um, to, based on the, the game you're playing, I will generally put it in a cup first and <laughs> shake them up really, really good before I dump them in the bag. Otherwise, um, I don't, I feel like I'm kind of pulling them out uh, as I put yeah. them in, you know? Um, but it can be frustrating cause it's almost like. Uh, okay, I've got that many um, explosions on the on the board. Am I am I am I really willing really willing to risk another one? Yeah. Or should I hold? You know, it's a lot oh, like yeah. playing twenty one. No, it's the whole push your luck uh, thing yeah. in many respects. Well, and it's funny yeah. because you know, it's like so, you know, it's say it's round seven and you've got fourteen other chips in the bag, and yet the first four you pull out are the explosions. Yeah. What, what are you going to do? And then yeah. the person across from you is just like, I'm sorry. I still haven't pulled any of that out. Yeah. So. But I mean, the game is somewhat forgiving in the sense that usually, so when we play. You would think so. Um, There's all kinds of ways quacks. to catch up. And yet it'll happen to me that in the last round, I'll still end by, lose by 25. So. <laughs> really? Because like Dale is really good about keeping pace uh -huh. with me with the rounds. Uh -huh. Because there'll be enough rats between us that she'll get to move her, right? You know, piece up and, um. But uh, yeah, for all intents and purposes, that uh, no, it's got some great little mechanisms for that, and that's what makes it a, a, such a fantastic family game, um, and and it kind of makes the frustration perhaps a little bit more intense because you can't actually improve, right? There's not like there's a skill where you're thinking, okay, so if we're playing chess, I'm going to study. Uh, chess openings, or if it's go, I'm gonna work on some set patterns and, and puzzles there. It's just you know pulling chips out of a bag. There's not a lot of extra skill there, so it's uh, the skill ceiling is pretty yeah. low, and it's uh, so it's both not frustrating, frustrating, and yet extra frustrating because there's there's not like a, a strategy board you can go read on the geek or something. No, that's that's fair. But I do I do want to say I agree with you that Quacks is a great um, mm -hmm. family type of game. Uh, my I, so I have two daughters as we've talked about before. They're not board gamers. They humor their parents. <laughs> but it, that is one of yeah. the games we can get them to play. We can get them to play that. We can get them to play Isle of Cats, and we can get them to play Wingspan and Parks. So there's four. <laughs> four. Do not proceed to five. Because, you know, I can't, we can't do a podcast without me mentioning Wingspan yeah. or yeah. Parks. No, that's fair. And those are, you're welcome, Elizabeth. Those are all, they all have sort of similar <laughs> things set up to help people, you yeah. know, stay in the game. And yeah, it's good. So I, I got to tell you what oh, we yes, finally please. put on the table this week. So we pulled out 
of the shrink wrap of shame. Finally. Ah, cannabis. okay. Got it on the table. And it's it's a beautiful oh, game. Uh, there are elements to it that kind of remind us of Meadow, which we really like. Part of it's art. Part of it's the way you build your card okay. tableau. Uh, and it was really easy to learn. We There was like a seven-minute how-to video on uh, YouTube that we found. Uh, and then we were able to do a nice. playthrough. And it was just like, and I love that, you know, it's like, cause I always kind of go to, I like to go to three minute board game as a refresher. If I, if it's a game I haven't played in a while, just to kind of remind me of sure. the nuances of the rules. Uh, and I wish there were more how to plays that are like that. Cause sometimes you, you look and then it's like, it's a 20 minute Rodney on how to play. I just, I don't know. I want to play yeah. now. I don't I'll get all, I'll points. get all the points, but it's yeah. going to take a while. Yeah. 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 So Anyway, um, but we we enjoyed it. We're looking forward to playing it again. That, with the first playthrough was kind of, we always treat the first mm-hmm. game as sort of like a shakedown cruise anyway, because yeah. we know we're doing something wrong. And in this case, we actually did do something wrong. But that was okay. We, um, it, didn't, it didn't change the outcome of the game. It didn't really uh, and change our enjoyment of the game. It was just, uh, it was just a nice little playthrough to kind of get ourselves acclimated to how the game works and, I like it because it's something that we can just pull nice. out and play mm-hmm. very quickly. And uh, it's a pretty game. So can it be if you haven't seen it or yeah, it should Who's be in stores now. I know I'm back what to the 19th you know? Uh I do know. Uh, if you give me a second, because sure. I should have grabbed the box. Uh I should have grabbed the box off the table on the other side, and I'm not going to get up and do that right now. But Weird ah, okay. City Games. Yeah, Canopy. You can find it at your – you should be able to find it at your friendly Excellent. local game store and anywhere else you buy uh, games. And the designer okay. is Tim Eisner. Not a name that's familiar. Yeah, so it was a Kickstarter. Ah. Yeah, so there's – so at the at the game store, which, again, all of our listeners will know when I say the game store, I'm referring to Woo! Carolina Tabletop Games in Pineville, North Carolina. Rob Ross, proprietor. I told Ross, uh, <laughs> Rob, I was doing nice. this now, and so that was the well thing. Done. So um, one day somebody's going to go in and say, I, I'm here because I heard about you guys on this podcast. I heard there was a – It'll be a yeah. while, but it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. So anyway <laughs> – so there's a young lady in the game store. I'll just, her name is Grace. I'll just leave it there. Uh, and Grace is sort of uh, one of my board game Kickstarter uh, gurus. And so basically the, the deal I have with Grace is if you back something, you're supposed to let me know. <laughs> it's good to have, it's good and to have I a, back a buddy system I'll, for these things. And if I back something, I'll let you know. And Canopy was one of the ones that she backed. And, and again, it's that, you know, it's that same aesthetic of the games we always talk about here, Renature, uh, mm-hmm. Wingspan, parks, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The the whole visual aesthetic of the game is sort of what drives that. So anyway, Canopy, uh, it's a good game. It's a and I think it's what I what I think is also good. So we're rolling into summer now. It's it's lighter, longer. It's the kind of game that you could take to the park. You could take nice. poolside. Um, there's not a, there are some bits to it, but they're not a lot of bits that you could lose and stuff okay. like that. So it's it's mostly a card kind of kind of thing and so it's a it's a good game to kind of take out doors okay um we should talk about nice and chunky bits that don't blow away anyway uh Uh, so canopy yeah yeah and we're going out of town later today it's memorial day weekend um and we want to take a couple of games with us because we're going to a place where there's some gonna be some kids so i think we're gonna take the cats and the canopy nice so that sounds good so that's what's on the table up here in uh, North Carolina today. Uh, we still have some from the shrink wrap of shame. We got to get out and get moving on. And yep. We'll get there. There's a lot of weekends left. This there time. are. <laughs> and I don't think anything new's coming out that I got to go out and get. So I think we're, oh, well, actually, no, I did get something. <laughs> I mean. New from the shrink wrap uh, of shame. This is another Grace. I haven't even opened it, but I hear wonderful things about it. It uh, is floriferous. Cool. That looks pretty. Uh, it is uh, also a very similar kind of motif mm-hmm. uh, to the um, interesting the yeah. meadow, if you will. Yeah, and, tableau uh, builder. Oh, there it looks like probably hide Rob's price. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's uh, 
Uh, it is one of those that is uh, Grace okay. approved, so I had to buy it. Thank you, Grace. But uh, I got to put it in the uh, the pile of I got an anniversary coming up. So congratulations. Okay, so that is all that's in uh, on the table. Let's move on to uh, any board game news. Yeah. I'll, James, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah, so the game. SCJ uh, nominees got announced. So we've got the Spiel des Jahres, which um, always a fun. Uh, it's I don't know, it's it's always the horse race, right? You think, oh, who's gonna who's gonna get the uh, uh, nominees this year and so uh, a favorite of the show cascadia uh from mm-hmm. randy flynn and flat out games the close cousin to calico we talked about as well uh so that's yep. one of the nominees and it's hard to think who's going to be the uh, like favorite here the next one is scout which is a funky little card game that has for me reminds me a bit of uh, the way that uh, Bonanza works, where you get a hand of cards and then you can't rearrange them. They're going to stay in that order, although they're double-ended so that there's a different number on one end and the, and on the other. And you can rearrange them, I think, a little bit that way and right. try to put sets and runs, something like that, together and lay them, play them out of your hand so that you can then collapse your hand a little bit. There's also a mechanism of playing stuff from other peoples that are out in front of them. Um, so that looks uh, super fun and top 10, which is a, a party game where you get a question and then everybody who's playing gets a, a number card between the numbers of one and 10. So someone might be a two, another person, the four, someone else, the eight. And then the question is mm-hmm. something like, and I think this is on their uh, marketing material, like Batman needs to have a new sidekick who's going to be, it's going to be Batman and who. And then everybody with their numbers says, you know, what they think is going to be the number two, you know, ranked, you know, this would be a a low and maybe the eight person is trying to think of who would be the best. And then the person who asks the question has to try to figure out which number everybody has or what order they go in. So just a super quick, looks like a fun party game. Yeah, the Kenner Spiel. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. So I have a question about this because so I, yes. before you get into that, I, I'm just kind of curious. So I look and I'm, I've got it pulled up here on the uh, their website, mm-hmm. looking at the nominees. And I, as part of my, it's it allergy is. season, folks. So I'm on this really high definition microphone, and if I sne- if I breathe in weird, it's allergies. I don't have COVID or anything like that. I'm sorry if it sounds gross. I apologize. At least we're not That's eating on this true. broadcast. I'm talking to you, <laughs> Philip Rosenthal. All right, Philip. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. The, the creator, the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, has got a really new, really cool podcast. But they eat while they're doing it, and it's a little awkward to listen to yeah, if you I'm have not, that not, a, not, AMSR not. sensitivity. Yes, anyway, please. getting back to my question: See what happens when you get ADD Joe with uh, a little bit too much Excellent. caffeine in the morning. So, mm-hmm. I'm looking at this list. I see three nominees. One I know yes. really, really well. I dare say, dare oh. I say, intimately, and the other two right. never heard of. How does that typically impact the winner? In other words, it's like you know, you go to the Oscars. Everybody loves Lord yeah. of the Rings. Doesn't win. You know, the indie film that nobody really saw gets the Oscar, mm-hmm. and then everybody goes see it. How does it play out in the in the SDJs? I'm, I'm, it's been around yeah. since 1979. We're 2022. Sure, help me. So, uh, one of the deals is that this is the German game of the year. So, it might not have made a big splash here in the states, but in Germany, perhaps it is a beloved hit from the last year. Uh, the other is that uh, game companies send them, and I don't know off the top of my head, if there's an entry fee or something like this, but you want to send your uh, copies to, so like the uh, Oscars, you send your movie and then they send it around to all of the voting members so that they can have a look at it, hopefully. And, and so then the jury members play these games and they have categories of, you know, like how accessible is it? Um, what are the rules written? Like, um, is it fun? These kinds of things, right? And so it might be something that's not familiar to you, but they've played it and said, well, this is clearly worth um, a lot of attention. And so we'll give it. So, you know, we've got uh, Cosmos 
uh, for Cascadia. In Germany, it's Cosmos. Here, it's Flat Out Games. Uh, Scout is Oink Games, which is you know uh, the Japanese company that's famous for these sort of small uh, boxes with a lot of stuff oh, in a yeah. small box. And uh, Cocktail Games, I don't know a whole lot about, but uh, Aurelien Picolet is, you know, looks to me like someone who's probably from Europe. And so I'm guessing top 10 is... <laughs> That's not a. Are you saying that it that's not a southern name? It's a southern name. Maybe you know Louisiana. Um, uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> so the the jury members will have them, will play them, and you see, there's a whole bunch of other ones that they will recommend. Uh, so Clover made a fairly right. big splash. Seven Wonders Architects, of course, extending the Seven Wonders um, juggernaut. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of these don't quite seem so familiar. So, um, but that's how that happens. Does that help answer the question? Cool. No, absolutely. That's, that's exactly what I was curious about because it was one of those things where, you know, I think it's important that these designers have a way to recognize mm -hmm. each other and celebrate each other that it, that isn't a right. popularity contest. Um, and, but I, and I didn't think that that was going to, I didn't think the answer was going to be, <laughs> Oh, it's always a popularity yeah. contest, but, uh, but I think for the uninitiated, then, and I'm very much uh, uninitiated at this level of the board gaming uh, community. Uh, I think this that was helpful yeah. for me to understand, and hopefully yeah. it was for our listeners. So, so you were going on into I the was. Kinderspiel. Uh, well, the, the Kinderspiel, Look which is the, uh, like yeah, the sort of knowledgeable gamer kind of uh, you know people who. So the Spiel des Jahres is game of the year. The first uh, game that won that was Heron Tortoise, and it's which has been described to me as a. Uh, children's game uh for uh vulcan children it's a little complicated but um <laughs> but it's you know the the sdj has generally been super accessible kind of rules light uh party games win from time to time uh, i think uh, just one was the winner a couple of years ago so they like it a little lighter the kenner spiel and the idea is that if you're German and you like don't know what to bring to a birthday party or you don't know what to give somebody for Christmas, you say, well, who won the Spiel des Jahres? And you'll go over with that as a, as a gift because it's going to be light enough that everybody around the family is going to be able to play it. It's not going to be a problem. The next step up is the Kennerspiel. And the Kennerspiel developed because they had um, special awards and then they started doing them almost every year of like, sort of heavier game that we really recommend, but not maybe for families. And now they, and then a couple of years ago, they just bit the bullet there and said, yeah, we're going to do the Kenner spiel. So uh, three nominees for that one are Cryptid, Dune Imperium, and Living Forest. Uh, I, my uh, daughter gave me Cryptid for Christmas, and so I had a chance to play that. It's a fun little uh, puzzly deductive sort of game. Dune Imperium little bit of um, deck building and area control kind of stuff and uh, coming out of the the dune movie from last year and then living forest of course looks super cute with a little edginess to it um, but also kind of a deck builder uh, with some other materials around it so they all it's, it's funny I was telling Laura that there are sometimes when the SDJs come out that I think well, I can safely pass on all of those. And some years I think, ooh, <laughs> I want every one of these. And this year, the Kenner Spiel are all games that I'm very interested in playing. So that was kind of fun. So I wonder if, you know, so the designer of Dune Imperium is Paul Denon. I kind of wonder if he wanted to be known as Paul Mwadib Denon. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I did notice that uh, Arc Nova yep. was on the recommendation list, but just off of that on the, mm -hmm. the Kenner Spiel. Which uh, is interesting. Uh, Rob Ross, the proprietor the of Carolina Tabletop Games in Bible, North Carolina, <clears throat> said that he had heard that Ark Nova is almost like a, 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 a zoo version of Dune Imperium, which I was like, hmm. all right. <laughs> I have to, yeah. I have to look at that. I had heard it was more like Zoo, zoo Tycoon. But, but you know, it's interesting. Um, my daughter, Maggie, uh, is ah. fluent in German. I, I don't know if I've mentioned that on the show before. She went through the German immersion program in high school, and we, we had exchange students over here from Germany, ah, from Berlin, cool. and Stuttgart, and Schorndorf, which is like a suburb of Stuttgart, and Munich, and places like that. 
and Maggie is very much into German music. Okay. And she has been, um, so the, I'm going somewhere with this. I really am. It's, it's relevant to the board game thing. So, you know, if you think about our generation, when we discovered German musicians, I think about Falco, uh, Rock Me Amadeus. I think about oh, yeah. Nana, 99. Eintritt and the Neubauten. Um, and back. You didn't, you didn't listen to <laughs> Eintritt and the Neubauten then. No. Okay. No, I did not. <laughs> But but her point was back in the day, and even into more contemporary times, to make it to make it in Germany, you had to uh, record like you're ah, in America. Okay, you had to put your work in English in order to not only survive mm-hmm. but thrive. You know, and evidently that's changing. There's been more of a uh, of an embrace of you know the German musician and the German artist, and, and to a degree, we're even seeing this. Um, in other countries in Europe, like the the artist uh, from the Ukraine that did that song that Pink Floyd turned into oh, yeah. a big, big video um, just a few weeks ago to to support the folks in the Ukraine. So there's that that local identity. And so when I when I so the the reason that that struck me is I'm thinking how in the board game community, it's like this is the source of all the cool stuff and it kind of comes out of Germany and out of Europe and it finds its way into the U S and we're the ones trying to adapt it. You know, I think it's like, like taverns of Tiefenthal and, mm-hmm. and quacks of Quedlinburg and, and all those, all those, uh, those yeah. things. So it's just, I like how it's, 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 you know, we talk about, you know, lay it on the table being the, these, the Southern podcast where the accents on Southern, what we're really finding is that board games, universally have their accent based on yeah. where they come from yeah. and how they get, they get spun out. And there's that, those universal, you know, those universal truths that kind of go around and, and make the games uh, mm-hmm. accessible to us, regardless of where they come from. It's kind of like the, the grim fairy tale, the, 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 the story that you're supposed to take away is still talks to you regardless of your language. The board games still reach you in a way because they're accessible and, and just looking at these, these games that have been chosen, they're easily localizable because it's more art than yeah. And words, there's a, I guess there's a whole history that we could get into about why Germany sort of became the ground zero, if you will, of um, games and mm-hmm. game design. Uh, but we can skip over that for the for the moment. Uh, yeah, no, I think that would be a good yeah. one for a future topic. I did notice uh, one of the games on the the Kennerspiel that they didn't quite make the list was Witchstone. 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 Yeah. And that's a, it's a Reiner Knizia. And it's sort of, and I haven't heard anybody quite say this, but it seems to me like it's um, ingenious with um, almost a deck building kind of thing. That's each of the ingenious tiles also fires off powers uh, when you play it down in Witchstone as opposed to just connecting and scoring points. Uh, so just kind of a fun one. Well, I also noticed here. Uh, die, die Villa de Vampire or Vampire yeah. or however you would say that in German. I know how you'd say it in French because <laughs> thank you, Anne Rice. Um, and it kind of makes me wonder because I know that there was a um, there was a vampire book where it was like a a, 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 a mm-hmm. Roland right maybe that I heard. I think it was Rodney talking about on one of the the podcasts. Um, yep. Anyway. Uh, we like we like we like vampires. <laughs> yeah. so. We've been living with vampires for over a year. We're doing now, Curse yeah. of Stride, right? And so, like, well, yeah. I even you know. So I was going to no, move go on to the, the Kinderspiel. So this is the the kids game, yay! And we've got so it's auch schon clever, and then the uh, Quacks and Quedlinburgs for kids. So Wolfgang Varsch is on this list twice, and then Zauberg, which looks like super fun, um, sort of. Uh, Oh, the uh, the remake that came out a couple of years ago with the the uh, volcano and you're rolling um, marbles down the side of the volcano to knock people over, and uh, it seems like the the kids version of that with uh, with a lot less lava. Yeah. Oh wow. So there's the and we so we have friends. Laura and I have uh, friends who've just gone to Germany to visit family, and we said, ah, if you find the kids quacks bring it back is you know, introduce uh, Emerson to that when he's can hold things. Yep. That's awesome. 
So I'm curious. So I know in children's yeah. literature, you know, we have the Caldecott and we have mm-hmm. the Newbery Awards. Is this got that level of cachet or? Well, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely that sort of that? thing. It's, uh, and again, um, the Kinderspiel has been going on for uh, not quite as long as the SDJ. They broke it out um, a while ago and then eventually added the Kinderspiel as well. I see. But the Kinderspiel is, is the Kinder is definitely the, um, ah, this is the one for the little ones. And you'll see, <laughs> I don't, yeah, this is Schmitzbiel is on there twice in Amigo. But um, there's, you know, the kids gaming companies that'll regularly land on this. And uh, yeah, I think it's definitely the, if you see the little popple, either the black, red, or I can't remember mm. what the Kinderspiel popple color is. Um, blue. Well, what yeah. I love about this is, you know, we, we've seen so we see so many kids that are today addicted mm-hmm. to screens. And I'm talking yes. like little kids. You know, you see the little kids. Uh, here's the babysitter. Yes. It's called iPad. Um, and there are games on the iPad and, and, and screens that will promote creativity to a degree. Mm-hmm. But I still love it that there's something tactile that's colorful that f- is different every time that is yeah it's formulaic in the sense that there's a framework but each game can be different and i think that that is so important to stimulate creativity and strategy and then think about the beginning of this conversation interpersonal skills (laughs) you know (laughs) the kid that flips the board over because he or she loses not that that would ever happen well and i think it just even getting used to um (laughs) taking turns and, you know, playing with friends and not, be, yeah. Lots of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and played a lot of games with uh, his older sibling and will play a whole lot with him too. So that's, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's right. You have, do you have Everybody's everybody under the, the roof, roof yeah. now? For the week or for, for the summer? two weeks, and then we'll have a short break, and then uh, when you'll be here for a month, uh, all of July, basically. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. You will have to bring her up to the yeah. winds of Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But it's funny that you would expect to see a Haba cool. game on this list. There isn't, but uh, they're regularly on there, and they always have great little fun games for kids nice well i appreciate you you introducing me to this um the importance Mm -hmm. of this concept as well as our our listeners in terms of you know what is the sdj uh and and what does it mean in board gaming and plus i think it's a great great source of you know looking at current winners and past winners to think about gosh what are some games that i might want to want to think about because you know I, I, I watch people come into the the, ga- the local game store that I'll, I won't do my normal spiel. I've already done it twice. Um, and there's mm-hmm. so many games on the shelf that you're like, well, where do I start? So obviously there's the D&D books and it's easy to get lost there. And there's the Warhammer stuff and it's easy to get lost there. But then you just start scanning the games. And there's Azul, about five different yep. versions. And there's you know, um, century and all these different things. And you're like, if, and, and so people generally will go, well, I've heard of Catan or I've heard of ticket to ride. Yeah. Let's just start there. And it's just interesting to, to see how easily people can just get overwhelmed by the choice. If they've come in right. with nothing in mind, which I think is 99% of the time. Cause usually if it's a hot game, you've special ordered it right. and you're just there to pick it up in my experience. Um, so I think stuff like this that kind of helps people go, hmm, that sounds interesting. I think I yeah. would like to try uh, Magic Mountain or Zauberberg. Zauberberg. There is a B. There's, There's two a of B them. There. Yes. I see that now. My Zauberberg. I said two of them. Zauberberg. Zauberberg. All right. Einkünken. I still can't say that word. That's the German word for square. And they and most Germans have a difficulty saying squirrel because the Q and the double R's that's messes them up. That's fantastic. I don't know why that I was necessary for this discussion, but it's always good to have squirrels. In the so, um, 
<laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of mm-hmm. ADD squirrels, um, you know, as, as we talk about the, the South and board gaming, you know, it's, it's interesting to me that there, there are a number of um, board game oh, yes. conventions that are just, you know, global in nature. I think about Gen Con. Origins. Um, I think the, there's um, Origins, yeah. And there's a, a number. There's Origins Field Unplugged. Uh, but, I'm, but it's interesting because last year, so where I'm in the Charlotte area. You're in the, mm-hmm. the Greenville area. Uh, there's a there's a con called yes. Mega Moose Con that takes place in Richburg, South Carolina, which is a real fancy way of saying it's Southern Rock Hill, which is a really fancy way of saying it's a suburb of Charlotte. Um, and we were going to be there last year with our D and D game, right. and actually That's right. do our game there. Uh, and then of course you know COVID flared and and that that didn't happen, but it got me thinking, you know, the, uh, you can learn a lot from these board game cons and i'm just kind of curious how pervasive are these in the south and i yeah. know you did a little bit of research and i i've got the list in front of me you I probably do. got the list in front of you uh, i'm just kind of curious i i, well, I don't want to go through them ad nauseum because i can always you know post the link where you found these mm-hmm. um in the notes below but but i'm curious um what was your takeaway from well one of the list? first ones is if uh you're interested in gaming, Atlanta is the place you want to go. There's, oh my, you know, like, I think roughly one a month down there, which makes sense. Atlanta's a big city, right? There's a whole bunch of different, and there's, it looks like from the Atlanta ones, there's a bunch of different sort of inflections of it. So some of them are more sort of all geekery. Some of them are more focused on like anime with a little Mm -hmm. bit of gaming, some gaming with a little bit of anime, that kind of stuff. Um, and then Dragon Con, of course, is huge in September. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the one that really yep. caught my attention. And, With um, lots and lots of cosplay. A, a friend of my wife's, friend of my wife's, and sort of a friend of the D and D show uh, is heavily involved in Joe Lanta, which oh. is the GI Joe. Con, okay. Uh, which I don't think has any games involved in it, but there's a lot of that same comic and diorama kind of stuff that would probably appeal to like some other types of folks i didn't see no, that on the I list here yeah. but i know that that one takes place but yeah but atlanta you know obviously major city destination city mm-hmm. easy to fly in and out <laughs> of thank you delta and they have that world congress Enormous. center which is it's an amazing amazing facility i was just down there recently for a work-related thing and um you know that that place is yeah. just so massive excuse me, it's just so massive and it's, and it's easy to get to whether you're going by uh, plane or train or uh, driving down. And when I say train, they, you know, Metro Atlanta's um, subway system takes you right, right into the world Congress center, which is, that is helpful. Which is helpful. Um, I noticed uh, Shushkan. Um, I hear about that. I'm a long time listener to the onboard games podcast and Donald Dennis from there, from that podcast. Uh, has Shashkan on Polly's Island, which would be a fantastic place to just go hang out in March. Oh, yeah. You and the Canadians. Well, that's also kind of close to the Cooper mm-hmm. River ah. Bridge Run, so there's probably some runners down there that would, you know, probably not play board games while the board gamers <laughs> were not running across the bridge. I, yeah. That's 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 horrible. I yeah. shouldn't typecast us like that. Cause... And, yeah, and, but it's... <laughs> yeah. No, that... that yeah, Polly's Island would be a great place to yeah. go do some board games. Yeah, no doubt, right? <laughs> what struck me, though, is the absence of, uh, you know, so we, we talk about um, we're doing mm-hmm. Curse of Strahd in Appalachia. And I was looking, and I, I and was be- specifically looking for Appalachian mm-hmm. cities. And I only found. Well, I didn't really find. Well, there's one. a couple in Chattanooga and Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know. Is Franklin's a little further Maybe. west? Is it not? Chattanooga is probably the one that fit. I started to put Lexington in there yeah. because I know um, Tipper Presley, who has the channel, the YouTube channel, celebrating mm-hmm. Appalachia. There was just some awards uh, and uh, for Appalachian content creators that she won. She did a great job. 
And I want to say that the awards were given. I want to say they were given out okay. in Louisville. That makes sense. Kentucky. But it might have been Lexington. But Appalachian State was nice. involved. But they used one of those cities in Kentucky as the as the as the draw. So maybe that's what what caught my attention. I guess I guess what really struck me was that both Knoxville Pigeon, well Knoxville Pigeon Forge, because Pigeon Forge does a ton of cons. I see like you know classic cars okay. and motorcycles and stuff like that. But in in the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area, that that's a sense. big draw those kinds of events and i and i expected to see at maybe Asheville on here and i didn't that was yeah i was thinking about that the the upstate uh we've got plenty of i mean there's two million people here hanging around in the upstate and then Asheville, yeah Mm -hmm. it's such a draw for so many people and i that's it is an interesting and who knows maybe the they made their there is one they just didn't reach out to these people or the people who put together the list didn't didn't land on them so yeah Well, maybe we'll just have to do the the craft beers and boards uh, con up in Asheville, and we'll go to the different. Yeah, you know, I know there's at least I don't know how many game stores. I know there's <laughs> at least one that I've been to that was kind of you know comics and games kind of space. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't get up there quite so often. A, a, a boards and brews, a boards and brews ah. crawl where you go from. Because yeah, because there, there's a, I'm just, a I'm, 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 yeah there's a game I'm cafe in uh, in Hendersonville <laughs> just down the road from Asheville so yeah 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 that's fair and I heard rec- I heard yesterday there's a there pinball is game. and you pay your money and you pay as play as much pinball as your heart desires and they have beer. this is also true it's a it's a funny told, little space I'm told. So on this list, uh, one of the ones that really – there were a couple that jumped out at me. Rocket City Game Fest, yep. Huntsville, Alabama. There are more rednecks with PhDs per capita in Huntsville, Alabama than anywhere else on the planet. And that's actually a compliment. <laughs> not, it's not a, a, a drive, uh, a, a negative diss uh, at all. So that one was kind of interesting to me because I know Huntsville pretty well, and I just thought, wow, that pro- that would probably be interesting because there are so many. Really, uh, it, it is a draw because of uh, a variety of industries that are right. there that yep. are in the science community. I would just be kind of curious to see what the dynamic um, would be uh, there. And then I, I there was one other that that, that jumped out at me. Um, I think it was the one. I think it was the sort of the what I considered the the granddaddy on this okay. list, and I know we we talked a little bit about uh, Dragon Con, but I also oh, yeah. saw the Dice Tower. Yep. On here, and I know that Tom Vassell has it, and this is the. I think this is the first time they've done it in a couple of years because they they had to take off from um, for COVID. I think I thought I heard him talking about that on right. his podcast, and uh, but I think this is the first time it's back in person, and I I got to tell you. To, to be doing your con in mm-hmm. Orlando, I mean, if you've been to that that convention center, it's you you talk about the World Congress Center. Orlando is absolutely okay. massive, right there. It takes up International Drive, that whole section, um, and there's just so many ways that you can do a con there. That if you and it's it's generally. You know, th- there was that old TV show, Men of a Certain Age. This is a con of a certain <laughs> size. <laughs> this is where you go if you're, you know, of a certain size. And so that, that's that's great for them. But that, that to me, would yeah. be an interesting one to attend, I think. Uh, Orlando is always a fun city to go to anyway for a variety of reasons. I, mean, yeah. I don't need to explain that. No, and it's interesting um, because I think, um, you know, there's a lot of places in the South that are such tourist draws. Like, it's... I, I could feel that it would be harder to pitch to bring a lot of people to say North Dakota. God love you, North Dakota, but um, it's not uh, not a place that most people just think. Ooh, there's where I want to go vacation. And there are so many places in the South that are like that. Uh, we've there's a con in Savannah. Like people love to go to Savannah. Um, Atlanta, I don't know. People go there. I don't know why, but there. But Orlando certainly, and. You know, Polly's Island, as we talked about, Kissimmee, Florida, as I see represented here. Um, just so many places that I would think, yeah, that would be a good, just the place itself would be such a draw, right? Like, yeah, 
we could uh, do that Orlando trip and just make sure that we land on uh, Dice Tower Con. Be perfect. Let's do that. Family vacation. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I kind of look at the, I, I mean, I hate to use a baseball metaphor, but it's kind of like a baseball metaphor in the sense that you have the majors sure. and then you have the minors and the triple A, double A, et cetera. And what I like about some of this, so I'm going to, I'm going to pick on <laughs> Kernersville here for just a minute because Kernersville, uh, I mean, Kernersville is a great town. It's equidistant between Greensboro, North Carolina yep. and Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's very close to the Greensboro airport. Um, I know it because it was one time the maintenance hub okay. for Piedmont Airlines. <laughs> Rest in peace, Piedmont. Um, actually, they still fly as like a regional carrier. But uh, but what I love about it is, you know, uh, there are a lot of great game stores in like the Burlington and sure. Greensboro and um, um, Ashboro area. And so there, you know, if there's a board game store, it's because people are passionate about it. And here's a place for those folks to get together and celebrate, you know, and and, and take a look at the games and, and, and see... Um, you know, what are the impacts uh, yeah. of their hobby? And uh, and if it gets somebody inspired that goes, wow, this was fun. Now I want to go to try this other con. Like I would love to go to um, to Gen Con sometime. I think yeah. that would be fun. Or Origins. I think it would be fun to do those. Um, but And we were going to do, uh, and I'm, I'm, this is, you know, me being, having one of those over 50 CRS kind of moments. Um, the one that's in that's Indiana, yeah. that's Gen Con now? Okay, so we were gonna go. We were actually gonna go to Gen Con. A friend of mine from the game store uh, was looking for uh. demonstrators to go and kind of be there and help people learn the game. So, so yeah. we were gonna go up and do that. And um, and I was kind of cool. I was interested in it because it was one of those. Occasionally, the folks from Critical Role they'll go and they'll sell out a theater. So I was gonna get tickets to that and uh, see them live. I thought oh, yeah. it would be fun to go see a live show. And then, of course. Uh the bad times of COVID happened and everything got canceled. So we didn't get to do that. So that's still on my bucket list. I don't necessarily have to do the critical role thing, but I think it would be fun to go to a con and, and be there as sort of like a, a, a demonstrator, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of help, help with that. So that's something I want to, I want to do um, at some point. Yeah. Um, that would be awesome. There. So, but um Lots of lots yes. of cool stuff. Um, yeah, there's, I was just super happy to see one. so many of these little, you know, some larger, some smaller cons just across the South. It was uh, great to have a look at that and see all the good stuff that's out there. And I can't remember, there was a con in Charlotte five months ago, maybe. And I wasn't, it was, it was, I'm going to call it nerd con. That's not what it was, but it was more than just board games. There were other elements to it. And they got Matthew Lillard to come and be a part of it. And he was there because he had played chat. Ah, uh, okay. Scooby-Doo movies. And, um, I wanted, I have, I have a couple of his, um, he does a lot of games, uh, or add on content okay. for like D and D. And I have a number of his uh, his games, and I wish I had known I was going to take one with yeah. me. They're like, oh, get this sign, but I didn't know it was he was there oh, until nice. it was too late. So, anyway, I'm trying to remember the name of his company. It's over here on the list, and I can't. <laughs> I can't see that far. It's off, off in the distance. Uh, uh, Beetle and okay. Grimm. Beetle and Grimm is his uh, website, and they make limited edition content. Okay. For D and D, so they have one. I have the uh, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. I have the Descent into Avernus, and of course, I have. Wait for it. Ah, there it is. The Curse of Strahd. So, when you see me, I have a a fold out when I'm telling you how long it's going to take you to move from point A to point yes. B in the Curse of Strahd game. I'm using their con uh, I'm using their map that says, "Oh, that's a 45 minute walk," or "That's a you know." That's cool. Barovia is only so big. Well, thank you, people, for doing that. Beetle and Grim for, yeah. Thank you, Matthew Lillard. Yeah, they've got some pretty neat content. And when uh, what's really cool is they give you like a ton of handouts. So when we were doing Ghost of the Salt Marsh in the store, I was able to pull out, well, here's the here's this uh, parchment. Or here's this medallion that you found. I mean, it's, they give you really high quality stuff. It's probably <laughs> overpriced and it's, I'm probably like just shooting yeah. nerds in a barrel. But, you know. It's limited edition. One day, 
And they give you really cool maps, which are, you know, sitting over there gathering dust because I do everything online now. Anyway, enough of that. So uh, I think that the the cons in in uh, uh, the South are, are worth exploring. And I'm, I'm curious. To, uh, I need to get up with the Mega Moose people to see if we can't maybe yeah. try to do something this year that we did not get to do last year. So if we can keep COVID at bay. Um, although the Southern Fried Gaming Expo looks kind of like it would be in my yep. real house. Different stuff to <laughs> look at and consider. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yes. So, cool stuff. Um, oh. You've been surprised by something. Okay. I just noticed this. Cape, Cape Fear Games presents board games at the beach in Wilmington, North Carolina. Cape okay. Fear Games is an amazing store. Um, my daughter went to the University of North Carolina in Wilmington, and so I got to go into Cape Fear Games quite a bit. It's, um, as far as game stores go, right. it's not a chain. It's probably the one of the largest ones I've ever nice. been in. That and Atomic Empire are about the same size, but I think the volume of con- of games that I saw at Cape Fear Where, Games uh, Where's superior. Atomic Empire? Atomic okay. Empire is in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, and they're in a, you know, they're in a, uh, it's really interesting to watch, uh, in the case of Atomic Empire, you know, there's there's so many big box stores that have closed and these folks are looking for people to lease spaces. Atomic Empire has got a, a spot that they, that was like a former, I don't want to say it was a Kmart, mm-hmm. but it was like a store like that, you know. And it's nice because they have so much space. Maybe they have the same content. Right. It's just spread out more. But they also have a lot more private rooms that you can go, oh, here's my D&D uh, group or okay. oh, here's my Warhammer group. Uh, they have nice. beer and wine. They have um, they have a ton of minis if you're looking for minis and stuff like that. Fantastic. So it's a really cool store. Um, Cape Fear is different in the sense that you walk in and it's just like wall to wall games. And then they also have a section that is um, uh, frisbee golf. They have all the okay. the fixins that you might need, which of course is probably that pretty hot be, yeah. at the beach. Uh, and then what's also nice is where they are. They're on Oleander which is like the main one of the okay. main roads in Wilmington and it's across the street from the mall ish. Right. But right next to them, they opened up a place called the sideboard and it's a restaurant coffee shop. Uh, they have games uh, that are just stacked okay. on so the shelves that you can pull down and play. And nice. uh, yeah. And, and a friend of mine, a friend of mine, um, actually judges some of their ah. magic tournaments they've got a they've got a section That's in the back where they can do tournaments to going on they have a cam they have cameras and obs so they can broadcast around the That's store cool. and probably stream and uh his wife actually is the pokemon magic card okay estimator. and what does that mean so mm-hmm. i have a card it's a Pokemon card. I don't know how uh, valuable it is. I'd like to sell it to you and or I would like to okay. buy it from and she you, says, I yeah, guess. Yeah, this is a five dollar card. Um, okay. Exactly. Well, there's yeah, there's I'm there's sure. a whole science to it. I don't understand it. Um but yeah, so it's a really cool store. Uh big fan. Um it's when I go to when I go to Wilmington, it's one of my okay. gotta do's. I, I I gotta do pose for a burger. Yeah. And the heartbeat in the bathroom. Um, I got, I got to get a, I got to go to PTs and I got to go to Cape Fear Games. So those are the, if you're going to Wilmington, North Carolina, great town, highly recommend it. Excellent. And it's got a really cool game store. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you know, I know you down, you've, you've talked about the mm-hmm. game stores that you've, yep. you've got down there in Greenville. Um, and I know there's, uh, I know there's a, yep. a game castle there as well. I've only been to a game that, castle yeah, in San Jose, California. About a year ago, maybe. Uh, yeah, I know that they're really trying to find franchisees uh, out there. Uh, if you go to Game Castle's oh, yeah. website, you can yep. see all about that. Uh, I've, I've, um, I like I said, I've been in the one in San Jose, California, That's, which is yes. where they're based out of. Uh, just to kind of look around. It's a neat store, uh, but it's in a very kind of like a cyberpunk part of okay. san jose if you can imagine mm-hmm. steampunk ish kind of yeah it's, kind yeah of <clears throat> so like i said uh glad yes. to see th- so back to our topic glad to see the cape fear games is is actually taking their girth around wilmington and, and drawing people there for board games at the beach that I think sounds that's awesome 
a cool thing because Wilmington's such a great city. And again, it's the there's a lot of ironic. Ironically, the year I was born, 1966, Wilmington was the largest wow. city in North Carolina. It is <laughs> <Yeah>. no longer. <laughs> Well, and I think it's interesting that we've, uh, once again, have these sort of tourist destination kind of spaces and pitches like board games on the beach. Well, you can't do that in um, Nebraska. So come on over. Mm -hmm. Fair. Well, and what's nice, too, is that, you know, years ago they added I-40 all the way to Wilmington, and now they're, they're, they're improving Highway 74, which has got a bit of an interstate feel to it in spots. Uh, that make it so much easier to get to a place like Wilmington before it was like a five hour drive on a two lane road. And it was like, I'm not going there for a con. I'm not yeah. even going there for the weekend. <laughs> and uh, you know, they've, they've done a really nice job of making this, the, the town much more accessible because the beaches there are, you know, you go to Myrtle if beach to. and this is totally not a game thing. I'll be real brief on this. You go to Myrtle beach and it's a grand strand, yep. grand strand kind of beach kind of thing. It's very different in Wilmington. It's far more intimate. You've got the, it's just more like it's more like there's no commercialization is what I'm really doing a poor job of saying. And that's one of the things I love about it is that you, you don't see a Ferris wheel every 10 feet. You don't see a hotel every 10 feet. It's, it's homes, it's places to rent. It's a, it's a beach that you can just go. Excellent beach. That sounds, that's, that sounds love it. All right. So enough, enough of that. Thank you. Wilmington (laughs) tourism for your sponsorship this week. No, I'm kidding. But, um, yeah, so there, and I will say as a final, my final thought anyway, on the, the cons, there are a number mm-hmm. in Charlotte in the Charlotte area. So I'm going to have to make a point, uh, to, to at least yeah. attend these and just see, see what's going on, uh, and, and see what's of interest there. One, um, one thing. Well, I'll let you make a final comment on that, and then I'll I'll kind of segue. Well, I, I think I thing. sort of touched on it earlier, which is that it's just great to see that there's all of this gaming interest, and that it seems like it's continuing to to grow across the region. And um, I'll yeah, I'll have to. I'm fascinated by the the gaps in the upstate and in West North Carolina, and uh, want to hit some of these, see what they're up to myself. So as a final thought for me, as I was looking at this and thinking about it, um, during COVID, Dale and I discovered Mm -hmm. the meetup groups. And there is a couple of meetups here in Charlotte that are board game based. Um, Right down, so we're in Pineville, right between us and the Carolina Tabletop Games store is the Waldhorn German restaurant. And once a month, this board gaming group meets at the Waldhorn and they oh, get nice. the hole upstairs and people show up with their games. And we've gone there and uh, at least once we've gone there at least once mm-hmm. really enjoyed the people that were there. Um, we took, uh, we took our copy of oceans with us and it was funny because one of the guys at the table goes, yeah, I was nice. a play tester for this game. And so we played ocean. So we got to teach it and I let him, I sure. let him take the con. Right. And it was great because he had play tested it and he told me he was telling us some, Oh, that wasn't in the play test, but it made it nice. into the final or what have you. Um, but it was also interesting in the sense that I learned some strategies about yep. the game that I had never considered playing in that, that environment. So uh, meetups. And I think with COVID once the vaccination started happening, meetups yeah. became a thing again. And I think so if you, if you have the meetup app or a derivative thereof, that's a great way to find people in your community um, that might be interested in playing. And if you, yeah, and if absolutely. You and it's, one, it can be interesting if you, you know, yeah. if you're playing with just your partner or you have a set group of friends to go to someplace else and see how other people approach the same games, get out of that group think and uh, sometimes be startled by what other people are doing and how fast they accumulate points. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is, that is, cool. yeah. It's tough. Yes. Well, James, it was uh, great to see you again. I hope you have a great holiday weekend, and I hope you enjoy spending time yes. with your complete family. Uh, <laughs> but until next time, I'm Joe Mahaffey. I am not bored. I am I'm bored James gaming, Engelhart. And... Joe, it's been great to talk with you again, and I'll see you again in two weeks. And for anybody else who comes back, 
but hang out with Joe and I. I hope all your tiebreakers break your way. Bye. See you next time.